We'll learn about Odessa by answering 11 questions. But before we begin, you probably want to know what is Odessa? It's a city in Ukraine located next to the Black Sea. The first question is how big is Odessa? It's fourth largest city in Ukraine. Its population was over a million in 2019. Second question is what is Odessa really like? Odessa is a relatively young city. It's 225 years old. When they began to build Odessa, there was a steep in its place, so there was nothing special to build. Then stone began to be mined from underground. This stone is called limestone. These are petrified remains of the seabed. These mines later turned into catacombs. Odessa from the start was multicultural. Italians, Austrians and French built Odessa. Another interesting fact about Odessa, Odessa Opera is an exact copy of Vienna Theatre. Also, in Odessa there is a passage, just like in Milan. Initially, Odessa was built as Porto Franco, this means a free trade city. All who bought goods, mainly by sea, did not pay taxes. But the truth was, they had their own rules. There were no building materials in Odessa, therefore ship their boat stone, and would enjoy special benefits. Odessa became third city of Russia and second most important port. What are some interesting facts about Odessa? These are Potemkin steps and there's 192 steps in total and it's 142 meters long. The archaeological museum in Odessa is the oldest museum in Ukraine. It also has over 170,000 exhibits in it. What stories can catacombs in Odessa tell? So this is what we know. During the war, partisans were hiding there. There's a museum dedicated to World War II in catacombs. The exact map of catacombs doesn't exist. They are studied besides. They are huge. They pass under the entire center of the city and far beyond that. In 1811, the famous case of Chilibi brothers and Rosenberg brothers happened. The main business was smuggling. At a time, it brought fabulous profits. They made the special moves in catacombs where smuggled goods were delivered from raid and from there they penetrated the city center. However, this wasn't enough for Chalibri and Rosenberg brothers. They began to steal beautiful Odessa women, hide them in catacombs and deliver them through labyrinths to smuggled vessels. They delivered the unfortunate to entertainment houses of Turkey, Greece and other countries. Also, for this purpose, well furnished rooms where stolen women were kept underground were equipped. Many of them already realized what trouble they were in. Some committed suicide and they were buried there. The criminals were caught after they stole Princess Lupkina, a representative of one of the richest families in Russia. In search of her in catacombs, huge forces of the army and police were thrown. What language do they speak? You probably would say it's in Ukraine, so they must speak Ukrainian. Duh. But you're wrong. Even though Odessa is located in Ukraine, people there speak Russian. Odessa is multicultural and the language was strongly influenced by different cultures, especially there were many Jews. Many different words and phrases only used in Odessa, like do not make me a pregnant head, which basically means no, don't confuse me. Quickly make the night, which is, means hurry up, Jewish happiness, the friars greed destroyed, don't make my nerves, and not a fountain. This phrase means basically something that is not perfect, something that's not good. Did Operation Masquerade really happen? Let me explain what I'm talking about. In 1946, after Marshal Zhukov was sent to Odessa, he decided to get rid of the, all of the bandits. Odessa even made a TV show about it called Liquidation. It is a story about David Gottsman, who is a police officer who works in Odessa Criminal Investigation Department. The story he fought against Odessa's bandits and criminals. Most of the story is what eyewitnesses told others, but nobody actually saw them. But the truth is, on June 9, 1946, Stalin issued a secret order number 009 in which the behavior of the Marshal of the Victory accused of bitterness and Zhukov was removed from the post sent to head of Odessa military district. The Pearl of the Sea, Georgi Konstantinovich decided to put things in order. Several special operations were carried out against the bandits. As a result, the number of major offenses in Odessa over past two years decreased by almost 60%. 
the story of French Boulevard. French Boulevard is one of the oldest but at the same time very interesting streets in Odessa. There is a large resort area in French Boulevard. Many vacationers visit sanatoriums and rest houses which are located along the entire length of the boulevard. 1857, on the French Boulevard, one merchant, Francois Nouvenu and Victor Eno, set up a winery. All of them are mainly located in buildings that were once the possessions of the most important persons of the city. Also in French Boulevard, or rather the territory of Dolphin Sanitarium, you can see the tunnel of fairy tales, which attracts with its architecture. As people who live in Odessa say, the French build a city. Interesting fact, this boulevard is over 200 years old. What can old movies filmed in Odessa tell about its culture? Here are some things we know about filming movies in Odessa. Filmmakers have always loved Odessa as it is a distinctive city with own unique history and legends. Many film studios film movies here if story took place in western city. Odessa is one of the most western cities in the whole Soviet Union in the appearance of its streets and architecture. Odessa offers a warm climate, the sea, interesting locations, and if necessary, you can use some of the services or equipment from Odessa Film Studio. After watching some old movies, I noticed how simple the things were, and also that Odessa wasn't much different from other cities in USSR. The uniform looked different, but interesting. Something interesting that I noticed was the Adventures of the Electronic, filmed in 1979, resembles a lot to representation of Chernobyl in 1986 in short Chernobyl that was filmed in 2019. What was Odessa like in 1950s to 1960s? Truly a time of great expectations. It seemed after two revolutions, three wars, and 25 years of Stalin's tyranny, the authorities realized that people should be given at least one sip of freedom and joy. Bones and crazy lines on Tiras Pole Square, but sugar, flour, and butter disappeared. Bread was no longer in short supply and sold freely in bakeries. Turkeys at the time were bought mainly from north of Ukraine. Red oblong was especially appreciated. A good feast turned into real outlet and life for ordinary people and became, as it were, an imitation of the cure life. Also, with holidays, New Year, birthdays, weddings, everything was celebrated. At the festive table in a circle of relatives and, and friends, they recalled the horrors of the past, sang the songs of war years, and raised the glasses so there was no war anymore. What is the monument dedicated to Orange? Yes, you heard it right, there's a monument dedicated to Orange in Odessa. Let me tell you more about it. On May 27, 1794, Empress Catherine II issued a decree deciding on the construction of the commercial seaport in Odessa. The decree was not enforced during the life of the Empress. Over time, Paul I, who received the throne after Catherine II, cancelled the decree issued by her and completely stopped financing the construction of the port. The main activity of the city, trade, stopped. Odessa fell into a very difficult situation, being almost on the verge of bankruptcy. It seemed that it was already impossible to find a way out of this situation, but the locals, as usual, were our Odessa merchants. After learning the emperor's decision, they sent him a couple of cards filled with oranges. Paul first loved the southern fruits, especially since he received them at the end of the winter. As a result, on March 1st of the same year, funding recovered. Odessa received 250000 rubles in gold to continue the construction of the port and development of the city and that was it hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching guys